how would somebody go about kind of getting the, the basic skills? Is it short courses or is there any such thing as an apprenticeship in let, letterpress? Uh, there is. I mean, Ellen, who works with me, has been here six years and she has um, done a, a, as near as to an apprenticeship as I can imagine. Uh, I think there's probably different ways. I mean, um, art colleges are, are desperately trying to get letterpress equipment back into colleges um, that they gave away or, or melted down 30 years ago. Um, so, you know, there are colleges um, that are, are, are doing, you know, Plymouth is a good example, has a really good letterpress department. So you can learn, begin to learn through being at university. Um, Swansea is another example, but um, but then yeah, we we run work. We did run workshops. We've got to kind of work out another a new way of of running workshops. So a lot of people come here and do a day course or an evening class over five weeks. And some people have, have come. We have this group called the um, Type Maniacs who have, have kind of have their own evening and they've just been coming back and run their own projects. So in in a way. I think there's lots of different ways, I would say, of coming into this particular thing. And Re Rebecca, what's the, what's the route into watchmaking, if there is one? Yeah, um, well, there are several different routes, and I think the most important thing is that there's no right or wrong way to learn, from what I've seen. So you can do courses. There's a br brilliant kind of foundation course in Manchester. Um, that leaves you with the basic kind of skill set, but it's something that takes a very long time to learn. So it's a question of just patience and perseverance more than anything. But at the same time, I've met some incredible watchmakers who are virtually entirely self-taught. And I met others who um, just went straight into the workplace and did an apprenticeship and started out that way too. So there's several different ways to go about it. I think it's about finding what works for your style of learning and uh, for your life as well you know it's not always suitable for everyone to just give up everything and go back to college or university so I think that's really important and um, to not be scared of making mistakes as well. Sharif what's the what's the route into pole lathe bowl turning is it is it on an amateur basis to begin with? Uh, absolutely needs to be really because it takes it does take quite a long time to develop the skills to a level where you can um, produce work quickly enough to make it financially viable um, which is not to say that different people learn some people learn more quickly than others um, but the, the first thing that I would suggest ideally if you can get to a course with somebody what the good thing now is that there are quite a few people teaching bowl bowl turning on a pole lathe all over the country so whether you're in the north of the country the south east or west you'll be able to find someone nearby relatively close to you where you can get some tuition um, and you can do that just by searching online pole lathe bowl turning courses um, uh, some of the people that are teaching advertise on a website called craft courses um, so that's a good way to look for that the other thing I would recommend people to do is to join the APTGW, which is the Association of Pole Lathe Turners and Green Woodworkers of Great Britain. Um, subscribe to, to that association, become a member, and um, every region will have a local group, a, bowl, uh, a green woodworking group. So you can connect with people in your area um, and learn more about traditional green woodworking. A lot of those regions will have at least one or two people that have become interested in bowl, bowl turn and using a pole lathe. So that's another good way to, to connect with people. Um, if you can't get to courses, I would recommend that there are some videos online, like I've made this video with a guy called Zed, Zed Outdoors. It's a very long, very detailed uh, beginner's guide to pole lathe bowl turning. So um, that's another thing that people could check out. Uh, and just be prepared to, um, you know, not to let th the, the other bit of advice, not just practical advice on how to how to get in there, but just advice for learning any traditional craft is to be patient and, you know, be gentle with yourself because, um, you know, it is a, it's a journey that you should enjoy every step of the way, even the stumbling blocks. And there'll be lots of those. And just just to approach learning a craft with that sort of mindset that it's a, a long haul journey which never ends i mean i don't feel like i've arrived i've been doing this sort of 11 years 12 years now 
and I'm still learning as I go. And I think that's the same for most people. Uh, but especially at the beginning, it can feel very, it can feel at times like you're just never going to get anywhere with it. So just to, you know, just to sort of stick with it and be patient and uh, a little bit, a little bit often and you'll get there. Great. And John, I guess it's a little bit different with the stave baskets and that all the other crafts represented here were done by specialists, where, whereas I think this was probably done as a sideline by farmers and agricultural workers. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's, it was a wet weather job sideline thing. I mean, it's interesting, though, because, you know, I've been a coppice worker and greenwood worker as well for some time. And uh, it's a surprising amount of skill that goes into one of these. Um, it's a combination of skills that you, you can't pick up overnight uh, and it tests you, tests you every time. Everyone's different slightly. And um, I mean, I would echo Sharif really in terms of that, that training thing, the training methods. Uh, approach one of us, you know. Um, I, I'm a firm believer in sharing. I think these things have been coveted far too long. And when they're at this level of endangeredness, um it's uh it's unfair not to share so you know social media and stuff i try and do all sorts of stuff and if anyone approaches me uh, i'm more than happy uh to, to 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 share um you know with the stave basket kind of thing a short course great i mean i'm looking to possibly do some courses next year um in the past people have approached me and i help them out when i can ad hoc basis but probably looking at doing something a bit more formalized this coming year um with the stave basket the, the the process starts in the woods i mean you're looking at a tree as it's standing and deciding whether it's going to make one and there are differences between the tree that, that will make one and a tree that won't and so the process starts in the woods um, and so there's that level of knowledge which starts there and ends here uh, and all manner of things in between. Um, so it's not an overnight process, but I think pretty much all of us are probably approachable uh, in that way. But a short course is a great thing as an introductory level type thing, I would say. And Beth, how does somebody go about getting into the craft of sign writing? Um, I would say um, one, I think one of the most important things you can learn is the Roman lettering, traditional Roman trade and letters, maybe in the proportions of those letters. Um, and then, yeah, then it's about getting yourself some brushes and having a go and trying to figure out which brushes lend themselves to which scripts and um, which hands. And there are, there are so many amazing courses out there from um, circus um, circus style painting to wagon painting to um, or courses just on Roman lettering so um, yeah I think have a practice with the brush really get used to using the brushes and then um, yeah see what what avenue you want to go down there are some amazing modern painters as well and graphic designers who have come from a graphic design background and they're now painting by hand onto walls and um, yes it's about what you want what kind of angle you want to come from and then with reverse glass gilding I'd say um, there are some fantastic books I might send you a picture of one because I was just looking around thinking where is it but I can send that to you after maybe but um, the the methods haven't really changed since the Victorian time so there a lot of it you can find in books and yeah I, mean, I was lucky enough to do a course with Dave a few years ago an intensive course um Dave Smith David Smith who um, I think is probably one of the most respected Gilders out there so if you can go on courses and then there's loads of videos online um but yeah there's there's so much out there it's just having a go and seeing finding your sort of flavor 